Welcome back to another session of Becoming Unstoppable with uh, Mindset Coach Andre Nell here on uh, E-Radio. Hello to you, Andre. Welcome back. Hi, uh, and thanks for having me again. I'm really looking forward to another Unstoppable episode with you. Yes, how's it going with you? Are you still unstoppable? <laughs> I'm, I'm unstoppable every single day. You know, I'm getting to the point like where... It. I just think about my life and I think about my goals and my future and I just laugh sometimes. Yeah, I smile sometimes, I laugh. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good, I'm feeling unstoppable. How about you? That's good. Yeah, I'm also feeling unstoppable. Eh? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, we, 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 we won't get, let anything get us down, man. We're not going to let anything yeah. get us down. We're unstoppable. <laughs> what, what are some of the things you want to like achieve this year with E-Radio SA? Do you guys have any specific goals? That's a, a good question there, Andre. Um, I think uh, probably the biggest thing right now is growth and, uh, you know, making it bigger and uh, getting it everywhere yeah. and making it even more accessible than it is right now. And, um, mm-hmm. yeah, and I think definitely uh, adding new voices, appointing new people, uh, all that kind of stuff, yeah. So growth, growth. I think the main focus is here is growth, Andre. Yeah. When you when you say growth, are you allowed to delve into some numbers? Do you have some numbers of like growing your listener base and things like that, or do you have any specifics? Um, I think at the moment we're on on eighty k a month uh, with regards to listeners. Uh-huh. So. I think we're shooting for a hundred k uh, before uh, uh, before uh, almost said before the month ends, before the year ends, yeah. Before the month ends, just say it. No, it. <laughs> that won't be realistic. <laughs> yeah, that won't be realistic. Just do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So growth. I how think that's you, the main focus. How did you get to a hundred thousand listeners? Why did you choose that number? Um, I think because 80, 80 and 100, they're quite close. I think that's more realistic. And it's almost like a, yeah. a milestone number, you know, where it goes from uh, 80,000, which is five digits, it goes to six digits, 100,000. Yeah, I think that's probably yeah. it. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. What if I were to push you? I'm going to ask you to give me a specific number. And I want you just to tell me, like, the first thing that feels right for you, okay? Mm-hmm. Instead of choosing 100,000 listeners, you said in the, in the previous year you grew about twenty to 30,000. Mm-hmm. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the challenge. Can you choose an amount of listeners you want to grow to, a specific number between 100,000 and 120,000? Um, okay, let's go for 108,500. Is that good for you? I'll accept it. It's, it's still quite round. But I it. <laughs> what are you going to do with the number now? Is this a <laughs> but I'm, a, I'm building on something we said last week and something that, that uh, kind of linked to one of my goals that I set for myself recently. Mm. Um, last week, uh, somebody phoned in to, or didn't phone in, they sent a message in to ask about getting out of motive, like helping with motivation and procrastination. Um, can you remember? Yeah, yeah. So one of the things that I mentioned was being very specific about the outcome or the result that you're looking for. And I thought about that throughout the week and I realized that I have I had applied it in the last month on my life and I wanted to create an example for everybody live to kind of show how that applies. So what I mean and like to get into the specific specifics of why I'm asking you for a random number, because I think it's it's a it's a very easy way to give yourself a goal of like a hundred thousand because mm-hmm. it's it's like around a nice sounding number, but I think when you think of growing to a hundred thousand, it it doesn't really excite you. Like it doesn't trigger anything in your mind. Let's say, uh, even though it's a milestone, like it's still fantastic. Um, I think just choosing a more specific number that's that's going to be memorable. I think just helps you to add that little extra bit of joy and excitement, mm, mm. Um, which is what I mean by being specific. Which is why I pushed you as well to to be specific. Okay, For example, like if it. you set the goal of like earning more money, like yeah, I want to earn one million this year. <laughs> it's it's 
you know, like it's a it's a nice goal and it 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 sounds nice to say, but if you're really specific, like. I want to earn one million three hundred and twenty thousand rand this year. <laughs> like it's just some more specific number, and it yeah. kind of makes you feel a little bit giddy and excited because, like, why why the heck would I choose this number? But you're still choosing a number that feels right for you, mm. but it's specific. Nobody else can choose that number. Do you get what I mean? Like it's, oh, it's yeah. yours to own. You get that exactly. Because a lot of people have. I've shot for 100k listeners or 100k this, but I don't think many people have aimed for 108,500 listeners mm. or 108,000 anything. So yeah, I'm just I'm I'm sneakily challenging you to to be specific, you know. Okay, no, I understand. So, now it makes sense. At first, I didn't quite understand, yeah. <laughs> but now it makes sense. Yeah, yeah that's actually quite cool, eh? Hey? And it's so true. Like I I did it with one of my goals um, about how much I want to earn in the next year. And I also chose one way to like uh, to make it even more weirdly specific and unique. I think would also be a better way to describe it. Would be to give a really specific date to it. You know, mm. like okay, by the end of the year is it, you get what that means, right? It's like thirty first December. You have hundred thousand listeners, but if you choose like another specific date, let's say a few days before the thirty first of December or a couple of days into January. I don't know. It just it just adds a little bit of extra, like uniqueness. Yeah, being more specific. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think it allows you to also visualize it better. Yeah. Because if you're just picturing the end of the year, like you don't know when that is, but if you're picturing the third of January, twenty twenty five, like you can see your calendar is like, and you can like mentally circle it, circle it in your calendar. You can write in there one hundred eight thousand five hundred listeners. You know, it's just. It just adds a lot of clarity, and I, for me, it adds a lot of excitement mm, to the goal. You're right. I want to Engineer. ask you, how do you yeah. feel about uh, vision boards or dream boards, so to speak? Mm. Yeah, I'm. I highly recommend making a vision board or a dream because you can see it. I think it's I yeah. think the best things you can. Do yourself, yeah, even better if you're an artist, like. Draw it out, you know, paint it out. If you're a graphic mm. designer, uh, paint it out, you know, or or design it yourself so that it's very unique and specific to you. It's useful for a lot of reasons because, first of all, you gotta you've you've actually got to sit and think about like what you want. From there, you can kind of get the pictures or the wording or whatever you want for your vision board. So it's already beneficial because you have to sit and think about exactly what you want. You know, you got to be specific like we've spoken about. And then also by finding pictures, you know, I I go through these stages where I can imagine or clearly visualize everything and then at a stage I'm like, I, I can't even see like a red dot when I close <laughs> my eyes, you know. But having like, having a vision board to, that you can turn to, you can, you can much more easily like visualize what you want to achieve and that picture mm. is much easier for you to get your head. And by repeating it, repeatedly looking at it the whole time, is also imprinting that onto your subconscious mind. Exactly. So I'm I'm all for it. But yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I know that in the '90s, uh, you know, visiting friends, some of them, I think many of the girls had uh, uh, vision boards in their rooms. But I don't know if if today's kids, you know, everything being so digital, I don't know yeah. if they kind of uh, do it. But it was so nice seeing it because uh, they will also tell you that that's the first thing that you see in the morning when you wake up. Uh, is that vision board and yeah. seeing that car that you want, you know, that little picture that you've got there or seeing that house that you want, yeah. just seeing it every morning, keeping it in, in your mind, keeping it fresh and uh, making sure you're still on the right path, working to that goal. Absolutely. I think that's a very good point you raise. Maybe that could be one of the reasons why everything feels so chaotic and disorganized, you know, like in the last few years. I'm not saying like it's because we don't have vision boards, but but because people don't always take the time now to kind of figure out what they want because the world's so fast paced. Mm. Everything's happening. Like have that just grounding reminder of whatever happens, it doesn't matter because like this is what I'm working for and this is the picture that I want in my life. Yeah, we shouldn't lose focus. Uh, actually, my brother also, I remember my brother had a, a, a wallpaper of a car or something at some stage that he wanted. 
Um, so I think that's probably also a, a good idea. Uh, just so you see it every yeah. day, you know, the wallpaper on your computer or on your phone, maybe. Yeah. yeah. I'm actually, my wife and I, uh, I think a month, last month, one of our date nights was actually a vision board date night. Because we're moving now, so we didn't make a physical one because we're not going to be able to move it with us. But we made a digital one. Mm. Like if you've got PowerPoint or something, it's actually quite a good date night idea. And it helps you, yeah, you, you also get to connect with your significant other on a, like a much deeper level because you actually then get to see what what do they want, you know. Or like, or with your friends, you could have like a friend activity oh. where you guys make vision boards together, but, you know, for your own vision. I think it's a really good idea. Yeah. So you're moving soon, eh? June. The days are flying by. When did you say June? Yes. Yeah, 4th fourth, fourth of June. Yeah. Are you going to take us along with you? The moving chronicles of the Nels or something like that. <laughs> Bad idea, man. Let me just quickly reset all my... And give myself an extra hour each day to document. <laughs> That's gonna be. Is yeah. it? A, is it? How are you getting your stuff to South Africa? How's that gonna work? Or leaving most of it there? How uh, does it work? We're flying with Emirates, so Emirates have like quite a good luggage deals. They have like each person gets two times twenty three kilograms, and you can buy. We bought an extra suitcase already, which is another twenty three kilograms for a pretty good price. Uh, we're going to send one box home, and in our minds, everything fits. No. Uh, we'll check on the day if everything fits into the suitcase. There's always something. We're not, like, yeah. yeah, we're not thinking big things like uh, mattresses and TVs and things. Yeah. Because our apartment was mostly furnished. We, we upgraded it a bit, um, but we're not taking any furniture or things. Mm. Yeah. Makes sense. I think the price ship those things back don't warrant doing it like it's just cheaper to buy it again in south africa yeah exactly it makes more sense definitely mm. on the vision board thing though i haven't i i was speaking to someone about it the other day i can't remember it was a client yeah i was speaking to a client about it and he was telling me about his vision board and we actually together we came up with the idea of an of a success board as well Ooh. so it works the same as a board Except, once you've achieved some of the things that you want, you put them on your success board. And the reason it, it like it resonated with us so much is because so often we achieve little things throughout our, our weeks and months and days go by, you know, years go by and we think like, oh, what have I done with my life? Mm. But if you were to have a success board where you record, either in writing or with a picture, like everything that you've achieved, how much better would you feel about yourself? Like you would have daily reminders as well of what you have achieved and then also what you want to achieve. And you'll, I feel like you'll be more confident about going after the things you want because you can see like, well, previously I wanted these things and I achieved them. Oh, wow, so, Andre, I love that idea. That's such a good idea. Success board, yeah, I think that's a cool idea. And now we're going to talk about perspective. Andre, how would you uh -huh. describe perspective if we had to, you know, just describe or, or, or explain the term? I think it's just your point of view. Yeah. And I think, like, perhaps deeper than that, it's 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 your model of the world. Like, if we're just looking at everyday things, I think just point of view works fine, you know, like, from the top, your cup is round, but from the side, it's like 3D and stuff like that. But I think if we were to go like deeper into, you know, mindset and life specifically, I think it's, it goes deeper to like to your model of the world, you know, how do you, how would you describe it? Yeah, definitely point of view. That's what I was going to say. It's the way you experience the world. Yeah. It's the way you see it. And then obviously you, uh, you know, form your thoughts around it. But what I often do is, you know, because we get stuck on certain perspectives. So what I often do is I take myself out of my comfort zone and I go mm -hmm. uh, to a place that's completely out of my comfort zone or whatever, just to get a different perspective, just to see how other people live as well, you know. And then I, I'm like, when I get back at home, I see my own place and everything so differently. 
And I'm, I'm like, wow, wow. I, I just saw what other, the reality of other people, how they live their daily life. Look at mine and look how much I'm uh, grateful for that I have. Uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I, I love that because I think perspective is so underrated and overlooked. You know, we, like from when you were born, you just, everything was like kind of conditioned and you know like your parents had a routine before you came along so like you kind of just fell into their routine and i'm sure your parents fell into their parents routines so like everything is kind of like conditioned and all your beliefs are there and your perspectives are there and they get like conditioned into you but it's it's so overlooked and underrated to just remove yourself from the situation like you said or or like get yourself uncomfortable or ask somebody else how they see it how they how they see things and it just it just opens your eyes like you said it's like something inside you just clicks you know yeah. and you just you see the world so differently just i mean i'm privileged to be in beijing where i'm working with americans like british people irish i've worked with people from like all continents basically australians the way that like, even just this is a very silly example but like we grew up eating certain like sweets and candy and snacks and we're like this is our world you know who doesn't know what a smarty is mm. or like a stary stump freaking like six billion people don't know what that is <laughs> and it's like it's so crazy to think about that because for them it's like what you've never had meatloaf or brisket and for like you, you know it's just pe there's so much out there and the everybody's perspective is so different and the world is so massive it is humongous and it just is it's just such a good thing for you i think to step out and into that and just see the world from other people's eyes even if you just mm. like we meet fellow south africans here and you see you know they're, they're maybe not from the town you grew up in their their life is was so different and you're like but i'm from the same country as them because Americans would like look at two South Africans and then think, oh, but they're the same. <laughs> they're not. We're not. You know, we're all so vastly different. And, and each of our perspective is so unique and so uh, powerful and useful. I think we should do a lot more to rely on perspective and to change our perspective and to uh, kind of elicit other people's per perspectives on our lives and what we're doing. One of the things I love to do with my clients when we're talking about some of their challenges is I ask them two things. I ask them to like teach me their problem because when, when they teach me their problem, it's like they're, they're taking themselves out of their own shoes and they're becoming like a teacher, you know. Mm. And so they have to think about it in a different way because when you teach, you, you can't just explain something and assume the other person knows. You've you got to give all the assumptions and the background and stuff like that. And another thing, that's like that's like mind blowing on itself. If if you guys are going through any challenges, like pretend that you're teaching e radio challenges to to another company or like another person you just meet on the street, and and see how your perspective on your challenges shift, and how many how many insights you gain just on that. And, and another thing that I love doing is asking asking my clients like who who wouldn't have this problem. Who would never have the problem that you have? And why? Like, what's what's so different about them? Like, what are they doing differently that you're not doing? Or what do you think they're doing that you're not doing that, that you should do? Or, or what are they not doing that you are doing? Like, that's also powerful. Just pretending like that you're in somebody else's sh shoes or that you're explaining something. Or even pretending your problem or your goal is like your friend's problem or goal. And mm -hmm. what advice would you give to your friend if they had the same problem? problem or goal it's just it's actually mind-blowing effect that just that shift in perspective can have on on how you see everything just now when uh, we spoke about uh, perspective uh, where i mentioned you know taking yourself out of your comfort zone i think maybe we must talk about comfort zones next week or maybe in a in a episode to follow soon because um Comfort zone. I mean, that's a different thing. And uh, you know, you know that saying where they say ships are, are not meant to be safely in harbors. They're supposed to be out in yeah. the sea. 
that kind of thing and how you grow when you take yourself out of your comfort zone. I think that will be a great topic as well, Andre. That would be. I'm writing it down. Yeah, that's a wonderful topic. I love that it, analogy. It gets of thrown ships. around a lot, that idea. It gets thrown around a lot, but I think there's so much more to it, you know. If we all just listen to the stuff we said... <laughs> I know. <laughs> that's that's like a whole other topic. Like, have you have you just thought about the stuff that you say? Yeah, and why you know? don't you practice what you preach? That's another one. Today, <laughs> I'm talking to myself. Today I struggled. <laughs> I struggled to wake up today, man. Like, today was a difficult day to wake up. That's I, shame, man. I had a great week. I rested well, but just today it was difficult to wake up. But still, you know, I I was aware of that, and I and I tried to put myself in. But the right mindset, which, like we spoke about a few episodes ago, is just a mindset that I thought would be helpful to me, for me to tell myself, like, oh, I'm just going to be so tired the whole day. It just, it didn't seem helpful to me. But, mm. you know, we, we got to work, and one of my colleagues just, we walk out of, like, the break room. We, we have a little break room that we can spend some time in before we got to go into our class. And one of my colleagues just said, you know, oh, I hate this day. It's going to be so horrible. Oh. And I walked away laughing, just just laughing at like, I, I'm not sure she said that with any intention at all, but she said those words. And I think, you know, like if you just think, if you just think and listen to what you're thinking and saying, I, I, I just think that that's not a very helpful way to look at things. So we should, we should take more care to listen to ourselves and listen to what other people are saying, like especially these expressions, like you said, you know, ships shouldn't stay in their harbors. Yeah, you know, you can tell me that and I can just be, yeah, that's a good point. But if I really like listen to it, you know, and try to understand, mm. it can create so much more growth and impact in your life. Yeah. And when my colleague said, like, well, I hate this day. I just, <laughs> I just said, I told myself, I'm so thankful that I haven't said that once this morning, even though, you know, I didn't feel good. Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But also to your colleague saying that, you know, uh, if she says that or he says that, it's it's going to be a bad day because they they believe that it's going to be a bad day. So it's not going to get any better yeah. when you have that attitude. Yeah, absolutely. It's, I mean, everybody knows this thing, the saying, like, to be or not to be. But mm. what it means is, like, whatever you think you are, like, you... I was listening to like my my coach and mentor, my trainer, just rewatching some videos um, about some of the stuff that he's taught me, and he said something. He's like, "You, you can only see in the outside world who you are. Like, you can only see and experience who you are." And I I, I listened to that again, and I thought, well, what, "What does that mean? Like, Eon's living his life. I don't know. I'm not affecting Eon or like." Or my colleagues are living their life. My students are living their, li their lives. My clients. Like, what does that mean? But then I realize it's in moments like that where you you speak out or you think about yourself or your day or your circumstance. And where do you, what are you going to see? You're going to see that. You're going to experience that. So, yeah, I, I just want to emphasize, like, like you said, it, it doesn't matter what you say to yourself. But whatever you say, you're going to be right, you know. And that's, I think that's so destructive and so like powerful and uplifting at the same time absolutely and you andre you can help people with uh, with these things so uh, with your private coaching sessions yeah oh this week it was an amazing week um i i was able to help a lot of clients let go of like some really uh like damaging and limiting and negative emotions and it was just mm. such a one of the reasons why I'm flying, I'm feeling so happy because it was so fulfilling to, to be able to help my clients just let go of all the negativity. Like, just just imagine of letting go of like all the anger that's inside you, that's been inside your whole life. Just letting that go in 30 minutes. Like that, that's what I helped one of my clients to do this week. So, yeah, if anybody's listening now and you feel that you're bogged down with a lot of negativity and just problem upon problem upon problem is just coming your way. There there are techniques out there I can help you to let go of those <laughs> and to yeah. feel happy and to like wake up think about your life and feel feel laughter, like to feel joy and to feel unstoppable. Okay, well that's fantastic. And how do they get in touch with you, Andre? Uh well yeah they can go to my website, andrenelcoaching.com. Uh they can shoot me an email 
andre at andrenelcoaching.com. And, you know, if, if they want to take a step back from that and first ask a question on this podcast, you know, um, you know, you have a line which they can connect, connect to yes. and send me questions. And the last thing I want to mention just before we, we share the number is just, again, I want to re- reiterate when, when you come to my website or, or when you're looking for coaching, there's there's no obligation or no cost to to the first session. You know, there's a there's a free session just waiting for you. There's an opportunity to feel inspired and to be energized and to look at your life from a completely new perspective. And you can have that all in your first free session. And from there, you can decide if it's right for you. So, yeah, I just I want to encourage everybody <laughs> to to go to go after the life that they want to, to make themselves unstoppable. Become unstoppable and listen out for uh, Andre's ad that's going out. As from this week, you'll be hearing uh, Andre's ad on on e radio as well. His unstoppable ad. <laughs> like, uh, can you share the number for the for the WhatsApp line, please? Yes, my gosh, I wrote it down here especially for you. Zero six one two five three zero six seven zero. I'll give it to you again. Our e radio WhatsApp line 061 253 0670. But it's also, it will be underneath the podcast. I'll make a note. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jan. It was wonderful to chat to you again. I'm looking forward to all of the streams of questions and comments coming in. Because, like we said before, the, the purpose of this podcast is to make you unstoppable. Andre, thank you so much for uh, another great episode. And we'll chat to you again next week. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ian. I'll chat to you soon.